Hello, and welcome to another episode of Blowing Through It. This episode is about making friends. So, if you are having a hard time with friends, with making friends, then this will be the right episode to do it. And and don't worry if it doesn't work. You can just pray to God and ask for more help from any friends or anybody who knows how to make friends. So that's it for now. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jarrell Connor. This is my wife, Kaitia Lamore, and welcome to another episode of Glowing Through It. Uh, today, uh, the episode is about making friends, and today I'll be leading on this topic. Um, this kind of sparked from a conversation I had with my wife. Um, I think we were talking about it like maybe two weeks, or two or three weeks ago. Um, and I'll be looking down at my notes. <laughs> I'm a note taker, so I always make sure that I have a lot of things noted so I don't forget the points. Um, but basically, uh, one of the things that stood out about our conversation was just the, the dynamic of friendships. And we've both had our share of a lot of different kinds of friendships in our lives. And even our marriage kind of was birthed out of a friendship. And we've had positive friends, we've had negative friends, we've had toxic friends. So we've gone through a whole um, slew of different types. And, and God has really shown us throughout the process like how to do that healthy and how to be a friend healthy and seek out healthy types of relationships. This part is where I kind of talk about the history of how I had friendships and like this and like from from high school so this was kind of like the first time of like my own friends and like becoming an adult and understanding how relationships worked and being naive and thinking that everybody's for you and that you meet people and you're just like hey we all vibe and we all get get along we're all cool because I was the guy like in high school it's like oh it's senior year everybody says like it shares this this time of your life and like I wanted to keep those connections. I wanted to, everybody likes to exchange numbers. I was like, yeah, we're gonna keep in touch. And I mean, we tried to, but I probably only still talk to two or three people from my high school. And everybody, I mean, you grow apart, people move away, people go to college, people are just not that interested <laughs> in, in talking to you anymore. Um, in college, it was, it was a little bit better because we all were, we were a pretty close group and we all kind of were in the same field. So a lot of those relationships, I kind of still am in touch with them. Um, but even in high school, there was kind of an unhealthy acceptance of allowing certain people in my life, because I just didn't know better. Nobody told me, and I was just, oh, well, this is how it is. So I had people that I knew that I called friends that, that used me, like, oh, I'm gonna go to Drill's house and do this, and they didn't. <laughs> And they're just like using me as a cover or I just what? to go off and be with some other friends or with a girl or whatever. Um, and like they use me to, to drive them around or, or do stuff because I had a car like senior year, like towards the end and in, in like right after high school. So I at the time, I didn't know that those weren't like friendships or they were not healthy ones. Um, so I kind of learned over time to avoid those kind of situations. And, and I think that's something that that I'm still like actively growing in constantly. Um, Cause something, this other point was through, actually through Tia, through my wife, God kind of revealed how to understand different types of relationships. Cause even now, some 20 years, 25 years later, um, working through the dynamic of friendships, it's, people use that term a lot and then it's like well what is it what is this friend group or are they a close friend are they a bff what is this like what are the different like like where they fall in and i never really thought to like like really look at those dynamics and through like a lot of conversations with you um, i learned that there are different people in different parts of your life like they'll be close friends where they're like they're always there for you, they're supportive, all these different things. And there's people that I realize um, I had a lot of 
acquaintances. And I, I think I'll get into the, there's definitions of this. A friend is a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typical, typically exclusive of sensual or family relationships. So not those things, but it's a different kind of relationships. Acquaintance is a person one knows slightly, but is not a close friend. And I think a couple things that stood out was the friendship is mutual affection and it's um, someone you know and it's a very intimate, like you know them. The acquaintance is someone that you don't know that well or they, they're they not necessarily mutual, mutual in their relationship to you. So I discovered when we had a conversation, I had a lot of acquaintances. So people that we sh I share the same interests, like, oh, we like the same, we talk about sports, or we watch the same movies, or um, we interested in the same type of whatever, like it doesn't matter, plug in the thing. And when I realized that they were, they were cool to do those things with, but they really weren't like there mm -hmm. if I needed them. And um, that was helpful for me to know like, oh, this person's an acquaintance, and then I don't expect too much of them. I know that if I want to hang out, if I want to go to a place, then that's what they are. They're not going to be there for me um, to do to do the things that a friend would kind of do. Um, so I think with that, there's like there's a reciprocal reciprocal mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of a thing um, relationship where it's like where I've, I've I've found that it's it's not always going to be a hundred percent mutual. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes maybe a, they're a close friend, but they're going through something. Or they're a season where they need to be poured into because they're, they're having a, a trauma or a loss or whatever. And that's fine. But it shouldn't be always. Like, you're not always pouring out in, in, in like, a relationship. Because I realized, for me, I had people that I was like, well, this, they're not really, they're not taking advice that I give them. I think that's going to be helpful because I kind of look at their life. They're not really doing anything for me in terms of helping me with my needs, or they're not really there for me. And I was like, well, maybe I'll stick around because God called me to be in their life. And it's like a ministry thing. And like, I'm witnessing to them and I'm helping them. And I do believe for some of them it was. But that is something that you need to pray <laughs> and put before God because some of them definitely weren't. I think that I had, there was a time where there was no fruit. There was no fruit in their lives or from even the relationship. And it's not like what I can get out of a relationship. It's about, is this relationship helpful? And for, for them, for myself, whoever. So a lot of the people that I realized that with, I just had to go, well, I'll love you from a distance. I'll keep you in prayer. But it's not, it's not going anywhere. And if God has something ending for you with them, you never know. Like maybe you were there to plant a seed and someone else is there to water it later. Um, or maybe they'll never come along, but you can't force people. Um, so that was something that I learned that was kind of difficult process, but like through this woman and through our conversations and, and God really showing what real relationships, what real friendships were like. Cause I went through seasons where I felt like, I know a bunch of people. <laughs> And I'm at a birthday party by myself. <laughs> and it's like, how does this happen? So um, realizing that it was kind of eye-opening, but it, it was important to identify who was really there and who was for me and, and who wasn't kind of a thing. Yes? Yeah. Did you have anything? I, <laughs> I think it's funny because I don't know why sometimes it's easier to see have more clarity on someone else's situation. Cause like he was saying, I'm in no way a relationship expert by any stretch of the imagination. But for me, I could see in his life different friends or relationships where I was like, this is really toxic or this is just so one-sided or this person doesn't really deserve the amount of time and effort you're putting into their life. Or I don't think they see this friendship the same way you do. And I could see it very clearly, but in the same way, Jarrell has been a champion and a cheerleader for me with different relationships that I had that were very um, unfruitful and unhealthy, but it took me so long to realize what he was saying because I thought, you know, like he's exaggerating or like he doesn't really get 
loyalty or something. It just, that's, that just shows how blind the devil can make you when you can clearly see something in someone's else life, someone else's life. But then when they show you something in your life, you're like, that's not happening. So, um, my history and background with friendships, I like what you were saying about with high school, like you grew up in LA and Long Beach, like Mm. you didn't move around a lot. So for you to have a childhood friendship, um, that's like the, the goal, you know, relationship goals. We've been besties since the womb and our parents are so close and we're so close. (laughs) And then, um, a lot of people like me who, um, I moved around quite a bit as a child because my parents separated when I was young. And then I moved, I lived in Ohio, I lived in Florida, I lived in Hawaii, and now I'm in California. So it was basically impossible for me to have a lifelong friend because of the moving around. And I kind of got used to saying goodbye, like, all right, well, new city, new life. See you later. Peace out. And let me go reinvent myself. <laughs> but uh, it's still, I think at a certain point, the loneliness and desperation got me when I least expected it. Like I was pretty good I think at having healthier boundaries and stuff as a single person in grade school, middle school, high school, once I got to college, it was amazing that all, and I love what you said about your college friends, because just having people around you who are the same age does not equate friendship. But when you enter into a life phase where you know where your future is headed, or you believe you know where your future is headed, there's a lot more like-minded individuals around you where your interest the number of interests you have just kind of explodes because y'all are like on the same path. So of course you're going to have more, um, more things in common and more of a quality of relationship. And that's what happened to me. Some of my best memories and um, friendships happened around college and right after college. That's even how I met my husband. A friend from college invited me to an art show. I got linked into those group of artists. I traveled to California, met him through one of those artist friends. And here we are today. So it was a very organic thing. And are you going to get into the term making friends or you want me to? You can do that. Okay. So that's, that's the interesting thing is like organic relationships for me were the best relationships, whether it was art shows, my church friends, like it was amazing. Like by the time we actually met, like I was doing great. (laughs) But then once I moved to California, started all over and didn't have any friends, I became very lonely and very desperate for relationships. And that's when some of the most unhealthy for me, (laughs) relationships started that I had to untangle myself from over the course of like 10 years. So it took me a while. But the main thing, um, like he was saying, we were reading um, and praying before bed. And the thing about we're talking about making friends. And then I feel like the Holy Spirit just popped up and was like, that's the problem with making friends everybody's like, how do you make friends? How do you make friends as an adult? How do you make friends as a mom? And there's so much pressure of having, I got my tribe and my village. But if God didn't build it, it's in, it's in vain. Because if you're making friends, you're forcing a friendship to happen. You are making these people into your friends as opposed to allowing God to curate a friendship that is going to be healthy for you. So even the term like, oh, we're making friends, I made a new friend, it's like, that's because I made a choice to invite this person into my life, and now we spend more time together, and like you said, we're being more vulnerable, we have a mutual interest in this friendship, but unless God brings it together, um, you're still just making it work um, for the most part. So yeah, any organic relationship I had just on my path in life, my God-ordained path in life amazing, supportive, there for me. And then if I made friends on my own, they ain't none of them around, you know? So it's like, that's kind of fruit and evidence that it doesn't work if you want to have healthy relationships. So um, that's what I wanted to say. So I didn't forget that point, but I I really like what you said about that. Thank you. I like what you said about that. Thank you so much for watching that clip. The full length version, the video version of that, is only available exclusively on Liftable TV. If you want to learn more about this Christian streaming platform, go ahead and click the link in the description box so you can see how to start your subscription and what all they have on the platform. Thank you again for watching this, and we hope that you have a great day. Bye. Don't forget to come back and watch again, and thanks for watching. Bye.
Please.